ഹിമനീമ It is indeed a proud moment for the AMU Alumni Association <coughs> UK, the Sir Sayyid Foundation London, founded by Dr. Farid, and all of you who have come here at the Perrin Lecture Theatre at Queen Mary University. We have with us our guests of honour, Mrs. and Janab Lieutenant General Samiruddin Shah. Mr. Shah, as we know him most by way of being the current Vice Chancellor of our alma mater, the world famous Aligarh Muslim University, Uttar Pradesh in India. Respected elders, ladies and gentlemen, I request all of you to join me in extending a sincere and heartwarming welcome to our esteemed and much loved guests of honor this evening. Please welcome with thunderous clapping, Mrs. and Janab Shah. <laughs> Here are a few quick extracts from the vision when I was going through the uh, official university website to see because I, I don't know him much personally to see what his vision is. And I quote few things from there. <coughs> I picked up two things from his vision. A, he says his objective is to propel AMU to the position of the topmost university of the country. We welcome that, we appreciate that, and we are looking forward for that. <laughs> Another part says total integrity will be my priority and it is non-negotiable. We, sir, we very much appreciate that. We want to proclaim today that we will take these words with us and trust you because I know that, uh, I know what these words mean when they come from a person who had been at the top echelons of the uh, armed forces. I had a glimpse of their integrity and discipline during my NCC days when in the army attachment camp before earning my B certificate. So, respected Vice Chancellor, we are very hopeful with you at these helms. We are hopeful that under his stewardship, the university will improve by leaps and bounds in educationally and also in terms of fruitfulness for those who come to seek knowledge there. He also exhibited that he cares for the students, but also values everyone connected with AMU. And the evidence is he being here, despite most of the alumni not being here today. 
we are happy and thankful that he did not forget even those bulbuls who once sang in the gardens of the alma mater and despite being overseas preserved those tweeters forever. I once again on behalf of AMU Alumni Association UK and Sir Sayed Foundation London welcome Mrs. and Mr. Shah this evening. Thank you very much and Jazakallah. Ladies and gentlemen, the time for which all of you have been waiting has now come. And I have the privilege to invite the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University to come to the podium and talk to you. As he comes, let me tell you a few things about his exceptional journey. Lieutenant General Shah's family comes from the Sardana town of Meret district in Uttar Pradesh. He is an alumnus of the prestigious St. Joseph's College, Nanital. He attended the National Defense Academy at Khadakwasla, Pune. He took part in the Battle of Longewala in the War of 1971. He is also, and I cannot not mention it, he is also the elder brother of one of India's most famous and most successful film personalities, the noted actor Nasiruddin Shah, who, in an article, has this to say about his elder brother, and I quote, I figured that if I focused in the same way on my acting, I could make a serious career of it too. His being a good soldier inspired me to be a good actor. I unquote. Mr. Zamiruddin Shah holds a Master of Science degree in Defense Sciences from the University of Madras and a Master of Philosophy degree from the University of Indore. Lieutenant General Zamiruddin Shah retired as a senior officer of the Indian Army. He last served as the Deputy Chief of Army Staff, Indian Army. And now, as you know, he has on his shoulders the challenging responsibility of being the Vice Chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Lieutenant General Zamiruddin Shah Sahib. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all of you. Mr. Hilal Farid, former president of AMU Alumni Association UK, Dr. Afsar Siddiqui Sahiba, Mr. Firozuddin, Secretary Dr. Wasim, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> it is a great honor for me to be standing before the alumni of Aligarh Muslim University. Let me tell you that every time I meet alumni, I get a surge, I get empowered, I feel that we've got to do something for this great university of ours. My entire family was educated at Aligarh. I joined the army when I was 15, so I didn't get the benefit of being a student of Aligarh Muslim University, but I did get a chance to serve it as the vice chancellor. So I have both advantages, family association, but no baggage. I am carrying no baggage. So I came with fresh thoughts, a fresh mind to do something for the university, to which I was emotionally very, very attached. Let me tell you that your very presence here indicates 
your love and affection for your alma mater. Let me also tell you that I have a team which is totally inspired and it draws inspiration from all of you. We have a committed team, totally. We may have different ways of functioning than normal like admissions, but we are committed, we have a goal in mind, and we are going to achieve it, inshallah. I have no doubts about it. We have given out a vision statement 2020. If you go to the AMU net, you will read it, my vision statement. It says quite clearly, without any ambiguity, we aim to become India's number one university by 2017. That is Sir Sayyid's 200th birth anniversary. We will, get, we will get a louder clap when I tell you that, inshallah, by 2020, that's when we AMU completes 100 years, we will be the first university of the country to figure amongst the top 200 universities of the world. <laughs> At the moment, there are no Indian universities, I am sorry to admit, but inshallah, AMU will be the first one. I would also like to tell you that Times Higher Education UK graded AMU as the third best university of the country. <laughs> the top two universities have only a very limited time to remain ahead of us. We are going to displace them and pretty soon. <laughs> We have steadily climbed up the ladder. I think at the time when you were students, AMU was the topmost university of the country. Unfortunately, over a period of time, we had student disorders, closure of the universities, sign dies, and other unfortunate developments which retarded the growth of the university. I am very, very proud to say that for two and a half years, there has been no closures at all. There has been unhindered academic activity, of which I will cover later. And we have made all-round progress. I would also like to tell you that the university authorities never made an attempt to contact the alumni. Or if they did, it was always a very feeble attempt. But my concept is different. I am going to follow what the Americans are doing. We are going to draw on the three T's. We call them the tangos in the army. Three T's which we want from our alumni. Your time, your talent, and your treasures. You got your treasures because of AMU. And it is now payback time. So we're going to ask you for your three T's, your time, your talent, and your treasures. Can be a small amount, a nug nugget or two, but they'll be good enough. We were so far behind American universities. I went to Stanford and I realized, my God, we are 100 years behind. We are still in the chalk and blackboard stage. So I appealed to the American alumni to give us 100 smart classrooms. They asked me, why 100? I said, we, we need one for each department. They have come forward. We've already got 33 smart classrooms in place. The American alumni are helping us. They asked me, how much it costs? And I said, 10 lakhs per smart classroom. Because what the departments are giving us are old, dilapidated classrooms which are almost crumbling. They know that the vice chancellor is going to do something about it, so they give me the worst classroom, but we said, it doesn't matter. Give us a classroom and we'll do it up for you. And we are slowly doing it. By 2017, inshallah, we'll have 100 smart classrooms in place. 
when you visit AMU next, you will see a clean, efficient AMU, wide roads, tree-lined. You will find our old historical buildings, redone, refurbished, restored. I visited, I spent five days in Oxford, and what I saw was amazing. 500 old year old buildings, totally, they're looking almost new. I mean, brand new, everything in place. What it was 500 years ago, still the same. We need to do that for AMU. Our buildings are 100 years old. They need refurbishment. They need restoration. And that is something I'm going to ask the UK alumni. What we need to do first is restore the Grand Mosque, the Jama Masjid. We need to restore it. I sent a teacher to Oxford. He spent five months courtesy Professor Farhan Nizami and learned the art of restoration. He is back. He has given me an assessment. <coughs> says it will cost one crore to restore the university to its pristine glory, the, the, the Grand Mosque, the Jama Masjid. Ah, Sir Sayyid was a great archaeologist himself. And our historians have done a great job in unearthing India's treasures. But what was it? Where were these treasures? They were lying in gunny sacks in a building which was crumbling. So I closed shop. We are establishing a world-class museum at Kennedy Hall. You'll be happy to see it when you come. It's going to be world class, I assure you. And I again appealed to the American alumni, and they got us a grant of $100,000 from a person who's not an alum, alum of AMU, but we invited him over to the university, and he gave us a grant with which we are making the, which is going to be the best university museum, I assure you that. <clears throat> the Molana Azad Library has been extended. The pressures <coughs> of large numbers, 30,000 almost students, are enormous. And now the women's college is trying to get access to the university. I have denied them that privilege for two reasons. One is the university can't take any more students. I mean, they are packed. And secondly, if the girls start coming in, it'll be four times more attendance, whether they're for study or other, <laughs> or bird watching. But what we have done is extended the facility online to all the girls. This is the women's college, 4,000 of them. They can demand a book online. Next day, it is delivered. And we have also strengthened the women's college library. But ultimately, the aim is to, to give them an opportunity. Once we expand the library more, we'll see whether we need to change things. <coughs> We've got new blocks for social science, <coughs> engineering college, Tibia College. Tibia College. We are going to be competitors to Hamdard. Hamdard is making a fortune. But our Tibia College Dawakhana was in a small premises. And when I asked them, why aren't we expanding? They said, we don't have the space. But I went, when I went through the accounts, I found they had 20 crores locked away in fixed deposits. I says, this money is lying idle. We are making a brand new factory. And inshallah, we are going to beat Hamdard. There's such a huge market for Yunani medicine. People have come from the United States. They told me, General, whatever you produce, we'll take. So we're going to do that. Our sports facilities are almost the best in the country. 
But what we need is a new swimming pool. We got the grant from Yusuf Ali. Again, non-alum alum of AMU, he gave us five crores to open not only a swimming pool, he says a sports complex. He is the leading, well, he, he's got hundreds of malls all over the world. Yusuf Ali, you must have heard, Lulu. Anyway, he came and visited the university, and we, I announced that he's given us five crores. The check was already in my pocket. He got up to the podium and said, I'm giving you five crores more for the women's college. Make a swimming pool for them also. Make them a sports complex. Why I'm talking of swimming is that we want our students to be fearless. If they don't know swimming, they'll always have a fear of water. They'll have fear of everything. We want to change them into men and women of guts and standing. And so my first priority is swimming. When you visit AMU, you'll be housed in a very comfortable guest house. I assure you that. The guest houses in AMU look like army messes. They may not be as efficiently run, but they have all the comforts. They have Wi-Fi connected. There's a geezer. There's clean linen, clean bed sheets, clean everything. One of the problems which we were facing was lack of hostel facilities. In a university which was meant to house 7,000, we have accommodated 28,000. I don't blame my predecessors. They wanted to give opportunities for education to as many students as possible. But we did lack. Girls were coming, living outside in the city. We are constructing a hall of residence for 1,500 girls. That will enable us to house all the girls on the campus. <coughs> they won't have to travel by rickshaws and everything, everything else. They'll be living on the campus. We are opening a hostel for NRI and international students. Uh, the students, we had thousands of foreign students when you were there. The figure has dropped, basically because we couldn't house them adequately. So we are making an international hostel for those students also. The Kennedy Hall is being refurbished. It had leakage in the roofs. The revolving stage was not functioning. We are doing all that. We are repairing it. There will be refurbished auditoriums at the Polytechnic and at Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College. These were necessary, and we are doing it. Academics. <clears throat> I've already told you about unhindered ac academic activity. We have reviewed the curriculum. We want to make our students job ready. We've interacted with the industry and asked them, what do you want? And we've changed the syllabi accordingly. We don't want our students to go and then get six months more training before they get before they learn their job. We want them to be job ready. <clears throat> we've already made an innovation and research council. This year, we gave awards to three professors who had the maximum number of inventions and innovations. And I'll tell you more about it later. So we are not neglecting it. We've appointed a committee for academic progression and university rankings. We want to make AMU a brand name. We want it like St. Stephen's of Delhi, so that the companies come flocking to us and our students don't have to go begging for jobs. And we should be in such a position that we say, no more. No more visits, please. Our students have already been absorbed. That's what a brand name will bring to us when we become number one university, inshallah. <clears throat> we are in the process of formulating the Faculty of International Studies, where we are going to teach Chinese, Hebrew, French, and Spanish. <clears throat> STEM and other things has already been talked about. We are encouraging our students and faculty to go out 
See what the universities of the world are teaching. Come out from the... Don't be a frog in the well. The only problem is finances. Our students cannot afford the exchange programs. They expect the university to do it, but we don't have adequate funds. So what I propose, and I have proposed to the American universities, let's have an exchange program. All your student has to do is bear the expenses of traveling up to AMU. We will receive him at Delhi. After that, he is our responsibility. Not a pound, not a dollar will be charged. We will take care of the food, the lodging, the education, everything. Transport. And I said, you do the same for our students. They land up in America or England. After that, we leave the responsibility to you. Is that acceptable or not? You will have to examine it. But that is the only way I find which is feasible for our students to the exchange, student exchange program. The faculty, faculty will look after themselves, but the student exchange programs, I repeat, cost of travel up to the student, after that, no more. AMU will take care of the rest. <coughs> Connectivity. I'm glad to announce that AMU's Wi-Fi connected. The walls were so thick in Sir Sayyid Hall that it was a problem for Wi-Fi connectivity, but we managed it. Tezubul Ikhlaq is online. I wonder if you, you can read it online. You don't have to subscribe for it. Kennedy Hall is getting a video conferencing facility. So we'll be able to interact with alumni, students all over the world. It cost us 17.5 lakhs. American alumni met half, and we paid the other half, balance. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you some, I want to give you some good news. AMU <coughs> nanotechnology is the best in the country. It's going to harness or going to lead AMU is going to be the leader in the second green revolution of the country by harnessing nanotechnology. What have our scientists done? We have evolved nanotechnology processes by which we treated plants. They grew three times the normal size within a period of one month. It's so I saw it in front of my own eyes. We treated fruit and vegetables. Now, why we did, we did that is because 30% um, of the crops is eaten by stray cattle in India. 30% rots before it reaches the market because there's no refrigerated trucks and other things else. And what reaches the market is just 40% what is produced. So we treated fruit and vegetables, and I'm glad to say that Mangoes survive for 40 days without refrigeration, fresh as the day they were plucked. Tomatoes, 30 days. So if we can give this facility to farmers, it will change the whole. I mean, it will lead to the second green revolution of the country. Uh, we have submitted our papers. What we have not been able to check yet is whether it has any ad adverse effect on humans. But the scientists who have done this have been eating those mangoes for the last six months. <laughs> they look healthy enough. In fact, they've gained some weight. So I don't think it will have any adverse effect on human beings. The next thing where we are going to be leaders is recycling wastewater. We have, in collaboration with the European Union, devised a method which is not energy intensive. Wastewater recycling is very, very expensive in energy costs. What is required is just huge troughs where special plants are cultivated, 
you release the waste water into it. First is, uh, uh, you know, sedimentation. Eight hours in that. Three days in this trough, and out comes water, which is crystal clear. Not portable, certainly not. That requires another stage. But good enough for irrigation, good enough for fish breeding. The plants grow very rapidly. They absorb all the nutrients which are in the water. So you get a whole lot of firewood. You can harvest those plants after two or three months. What is left in the sedimentation process is very rich manure. So you have your water. There's another stage involving UV, where if you want to drink that water, you can. So we are leaders in this. <clears throat> if we want to be the number one university of the country, we cannot compete with the IITs or the IIMs or the liberally funded medical institutions. But we are trying. Where we are going to concentrate on is our traditional departments. Yunani medicine, theology, West Asian studies, history, Arabic, Persian, Urdu. Urdu. That's something I missed when I was a child. Uh, I went to under care of Irish Christian brothers. I did know enough to write letters to my mother. That's it. But I'm correcting the whole thing. Urdu was taken as a laugh in AMU because its attendance was not counted. Its marks were not counted in your degree. So nobody came for Urdu classes. And I found our students reading Hindi newspapers. So I said, something's got to be done quickly. Despite all the resistance, we got it, pushed it through. Urdu attendance is now compulsory. Its marks are counted. So people have started reading Urdu newspapers. I myself am trying to learn Sher Shari. <laughs> That's something where I get an inferiority complex. I can quote the Charles of the Light Brigade and other uh, Lord Tennyson's poems, but Urdu's uh, Sher Shari is something which I intend learning. Pa. We already have a, an agreement with the government that we'll get uninterrupted supply, but unfortunately, I'm paying 26 crores a year for that power. That means all non-planned budget of 30 crores is gone in electricity bills. What we are doing now is going to be, we're going to invest 20 crores in sun farms, you know, having these huge capacity generators will be far too expensive. Sun farms, to generate one megawatt, you need five acres of land and five crores. So we're going to invest 20 crores and 20 acres of land. We've got hundreds of acres of unproductive land under agriculture, which give us nothing in return. The cattle eat it up, the mollies, steal most of the produce. We are going to have an in and out meter. We will feed the grid from the sun farms. And then we will consume electricity. So whatever we feed in will be deducted. And we hope that with the four megawatts, our bills will be cut into half. That means from 26 or 25 crores, it will be reduced to 12.5 crores. So the 20 crores which, I, which we invest, we should recover it in two to three years. The rest, the life of those panels is 20 years. We are negotiating with 
several firms to do this. So we will have uninterrupted power and at reduced costs. Let me also tell you something about madarsas. Much demonized all over the world. They are supposed to be the breeding ground of all sorts of nonsense. Totally incorrect. They are the biggest educational network in the country. I myself started my education in a madarsa. So I have love and attachment for these. <laughs> what are we doing about it? AMU admitted madarsa students to Arabic, theology, Persian. That's all. We have opened the doors of the university to all madarsa students who qualify in the written examination. Now, that's difficult. So last year, we conducted a bridge course for 50 madarsa students. Our view is that a madarsa student who's memorized the Quran would have a huge capacity to, to imbibe anything. We gave them a compressed course in English, computers, general knowledge. I'm glad to say, except for three, all these madarsa students have qualified for history, English honors, not only in AMU, but in Jamia Millia Islamia and Hamdard University. So it was a very successful experiment. This year, we are running a course of 65 students. We've taken 15 girls also, madarsa educated girls. And they are showing so much promise. When you visit, you'll you must interact with our madrasa students. We are calling it the bridge course. It's the bridge from Dini education to modern scientific education. The message it is sending to the madrasas is pressure of the students. They say, look, AMU is doing this for, for madrasa students. We want to qualify. For God's sake, change the syllabus. The teachers don't want to change it because they know nothing else. They only know deen. They don't know dunya. They'll have to change. The pressure from the students will be so overpowering. We tried to convince the madarsas to change. But they were very, very reluctant. They said, no, no, madarsas are only meant for deen, education. I said, no, it's meant for deen and dunya, both. Better change, otherwise we'll be left behind. So we are harnessing the power of the Madaris, and inshallah we will succeed. Having had the benefit of a good first-rate school education, the army did the rest. I educated myself, the army gave me opportunities, but I went with a senior Cambridge. I realized that I was so well equipped with my senior Cambridge certificate <coughs> to face anything. Uh, you can put anybody in front, at least I'll know what I'm talking about. What we lack is good schooling for our students. AMU is providing higher education. So we're making a start. We are starting off with establishing Sir Sayyid Public School at Muzaffar Nagar for the riot victims. We have got a, a donation of 12.5 bigas, that's almost four acres. And what we want to do is establish Sir Sayyid Public Schools across the country. We are starting off with Muzaffar Nagar because that was hit by riots. All institutions were destroyed. And that's what we, and this, the idea came up from the students themselves. They said, we won't have Sir Sayyid Day dinner last year. So we, the 51 lakhs which we would have spent on the dinner, we're going to make a school. And when people heard that we have, AMU has contributed 51 lakhs, we got donations of 1.5 crores. So we got two crores in our pockets. 
we are going to make a first rate school first rate it will be better than the missionary schools and inshallah if this project succeeds there will be sir sayed public schools all over there is resistance to our forward movement we are trying to run not walk forward when you move forward even the air offers resistance and we have a whole lot of resistance from some alumni some teachers the vast majority are behind us but there is resistance criticism you would read it on the net but we are not bothered it doesn't affect us at all we are pretty thick skinned criticism doesn't bother me or my team we will cut through resistance it will not hamper our progress forward provided we have the blessings and the support of our alumni my last word to you is what i've been saying everywhere your 100 will make a 100% difference to your alma mater what do i mean by that whichever country you are in if every alumni contributes 100 of the currency he is earning just 100 if you are in india 100 rupees is good enough if you are in america 100 dollars if you are in uk 100 pounds if thousands of alumni give us 100 of theirs it will make a 100% difference to your alma mater i have noted the advice given i have already answered some of the the things that are troubling you all but let me give you one assurance inshallah we will be number one university by 2017 if you got any questions i'll be happy to answer them thank you ah before i forget i'd like to present a small memento to the alumni association of uk would you please accept it? i have been requested uh, dr mohit siddiqui who is the senior most person here and an ex uh, president of the association to kindly receive it from the honorable vice chancellor on our behalf and i would request dr bd khan to please Sorry, join us please come thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. time for you ladies and gentlemen to ask any questions we are running short of time i am very aware of that so let us keep it to three questions and please one person can only ask in this short time one question now ask anything nothing embarrasses me <laughs> yes. can we make donations online to him yes if you go on the amu website you'll get it you can make donation please give your name and uh, let me assure you it will be acknowledged the next day okay. we want to talk something dr Jay. khizar said now is your time any questions yes. to yes. ask any question we are one question yes. so i will probably even go to one question okay. <laughs> and my it's not a question basically a suggestion my thinking is the amu is struggling with income generation with income generation yes i think what you're trying to do is to reach out to the alumni and find out whether they can contribute which is very good thing but i think you also have to look internally how you can generate income one of the way of generating i have the exposure of working and living in on the top institutions in the world and what they are doing particularly oxford and mit they are generating their own income one solution is to generate income within the amu and that you can do by creating the science park whatever research you are doing try to market it exploit it develop the companies which you i had the liberty okay, to work can i stop there yes. please you, you have conveyed what you want to say 
Mr. Vaishnava, do you yes. have to respond? Yes, absolutely. You're absolutely right. I have already told you about the Dawa Khana. Yeah. We are trying to energize our farms. The moat around the fort, which has been dry since 1980, will be filled up with recycled water. We are generating thousands of liters of waste water, which is just being drained away. We are going to have fish farms. Most important is to stop the pillaging of the university. We ha I'll just tell you, Banaras Hindu University has got a corpus of 2,600 crores. Ours is not even 40 crores. And they are just a few months older than us. So we are trying to save as much. You know, a penny saved is a penny earned. We are trying to save whatever way we can. And that's why it's leading to a lot of criticism. People are finding, oh, I was used to so and so, and now I'm not getting it. You jolly well have to live. And you're not poorly paid. Our teachers are very well paid. I Thank you. We will. And the science park, we are already at it with the American alumni. Very good science park in Oxford. Yes. Try to get there. Yes. Very good science park. Very good. Absolutely. Thank you very much. We are already at it. Right. Is there any uh, one last question? And if there isn't, then we will finish this session here. There isn't. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Chancellor. I would say, "Dekhna takrir ki lazat ke jo usne kaha, maine ye jana ke goya ye bhi mere dil mein." Mr. Vice Chancellor, I can assure you that we are behind you. You, you did mention about Tennyson's Charge of the Light Brigade, but I, listening to you, it's very clear that you have thought it through, and your charge will be a different one, and it will be a positive one. And I assure you that we, alumni in UK, are with you, Thank and you. we will do our best to make your programs a success. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And I ask now Nadeem Abbasi, our executive committee member, to come and deliver his vote of thanks. Honorable Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. It gives me great pleasure in proposing the vote of thanks for what has been a memorable evening for us. I would like to extend a special appreciation to our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Zamiruddin Shah and Mrs. Shah for joining us this evening. General Shah has been, has been relentless in promoting service on quality, integrity, and sustainability over the last two years as the Vice Chancellor of a beloved alma mater. Honorable Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Illegal Muslim University Alumni Association UK, I wish to express our gratitude to you for steering AMU through the new, often tumultuous, but exciting and challenging era in higher education. This has been achieved through your caring and people-centered leadership. I would also like to thank our guest speakers, Dr. Vaseem, for his passionate vision for AMU, and who, along with the Queen Mary University, helped us organize this event. Dr. Hilal Farid for his talk on Sir Sayyid AMU and us, and Mr. Feroz Mirza for your warm welcome address. And finally, my thanks to all of you for being here and being a wonderful audience. Thank you and good night.